you know, just welcome you. So I'm going to take that guest away and say, family, it is good to be back. We had a great time out there, but thank God that he got us back here safely. Only a few nicks and bruises, but other than that, we are uh, walking no broken bones. So thank God for that. We're good. We're good. And so as I start this sermon this morning, it really came as a revelation to me during our travels. And it was about how much trust we have. The, the dictionary, and I didn't go and use my, my own thoughts on it. I came straight from the dictionary. It says trust, reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, surety of a person or thing, having confidence, having confidence. Most people take trust and they don't really think too much about it. They look at trust and they say, I'll give my trust, but not even realizing how much trust you're giving away. Do you realize that we trust people on very small or big things, but we don't realize that we're doing it. It took a matter of trust for you to even make it here today. You may have ridden with someone. You're putting trust in them that they're going to get you safely, that God is on them to get you safely somewhere. The other amount of trust that we don't recognize is you're trusting the other people in vehicles that are next to you. You're putting a certain amount of trust in other vehicles next to you, people you don't even know, yet you're trusting them to stay in their lane. Cat often says that, man, someone gets up so close or they, they, you know, they try and cut in really close to you, and she'll say all the time, they really have a lot of trust in my brakes today. Think about that. That's the amount of trust. We got into this big silver cylinder and flew halfway across the country. And I can tell you, I don't know how planes stay in the air. I just know that they do. I don't know the mechanics behind it. But I had a certain level of trust that, well, God's going to get me there. It's not necessarily in the people, but God's going to get us there. But the reality is that there's people there that, are they trusting in God to do their job? To do their job. We trust we trust their diagnosis. I had someone near and dear to me who said that there was a doctor that told them that they had something, and I said, so you allowed the doctor that doesn't specialize in this to tell you what you have. Come to find out when they went to somewhere else, they got a different diagnosis. You see, because that's the trust that we have because someone has a few letters behind their name. We got to be careful about who we trust, how much trust we give into them. So the title of this sermon is A Matter of Trust. And I'll tell you this story. I'm not going to finish it right now. I'll finish it at the end, but I'll give you this, this story. It's about a man who was forced to move his wife and child out of a land that they were comfortable with into a land that they were somewhat familiar with but didn't really know. Forced to do something and uh, didn't even really know why, what was going on. The reality is they were losing everything or it seemed that they were losing everything. I said I'll finish this story later because the truth is, revelation to you sometimes comes at a later time. It doesn't always come right in that moment when you're going through things. But see, the idea is you need to trust in the Lord to guide your ways. You see, the plan that was happening, it wasn't the man's plan, but it was God's plan. You see, that's really odd sometimes when people don't see things through the spiritual and you're fighting things physically but you don't see things through the spiritual you think that all is gone all is lost everything's burning up around you and yet you don't realize that it's not your plan it's God's plan and then all of a sudden you start to lose the trust in God because you can't see God in the midst of the storm Sometimes it does get difficult, but the reality is we still have to trust. 
Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Have you ever realized at some point or points in your life that you couldn't even trust yourself? Have you ever realized that at some point or points in your life that you couldn't trust yourself? Your decision or reasoning skills, they were somewhat flawed. You were making the wrong choices. Maybe you had a blind spot to certain people or something. You know, we all have those blind spots. We say, oh, you know, this, this person, you know, they're really on my side. But you can't really see the specific issue because of your own blind spot, but yet you still put a lot of trust in them. I've known people that have wasted days, months, and years because of people. I've known folks that have wasted days, months, and years on jobs and realized that they don't really value me, but yet they stay there. They stay in that space, that place. They stuck, they're stuck right there. They can't seem to move. You see, and then we put trust in many things and certain people and get surprised when things fail. We, we're surprised. We're like, what, what happened? How did this happen? Well, the reality is the person that you put the trust in, because let's face it, in the physical, the person, people fail, things fail, and places fail. That's why we were praying over where we came from today. It was a sad. It broke my heart. It really broke my heart. Oftentimes, we don't even realize why. We think that we've vetted every aspect, every situation of this plan that we wanted to do. We've done all of our due diligence to try to figure it out and make things work. But there's one thing, one thing that we fail to do at times. Put God in your plan. Put God in your plan. We leave him out. We think, oh, this is too small. I don't want to bring this to God. Why? Why would you do that? He cares about every single aspect of your life. It doesn't matter what you think is big or small because here again, we're looking through these physical eyes. We can't see all the time what God sees. God sees more than what we see. What you think is small turns out later on to be so much larger than what you could ever have thought. So much larger. And so that one instance where you feel that, well, this is small. I'm not going to bring it to God. And then guess what? You ever see a snowball as it starts to roll down a hill? Thank God we didn't have that out there. Because I, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not running from snowballs. I don't run as fast as I used to. But when they start to grow and grow, they pick up and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's that snowball effect we all know about. It starts off small, and then it gets larger and larger and larger. And then all of a sudden, you're like, Lord, help me. Where, where are you? That's when we start to call on the Lord, when things are really deep, really heavy on us. We've got to remove that and start thinking more about start with the small things. Start with everything. Everything is what we should be doing. We forget that the, the things that, that God is seeing, because he sees all, we forget about that. And we just lean to our own understanding. We figure, hey, I got this. I don't need to worry about what, you know, what, what God is thinking about this because I've already got this. But we didn't check with God first. We didn't check with God first. You see, we can't see in the thoughts of we can't see into the thoughts and hearts of man with our physical eyes. It just doesn't work. So when you are failed by someone, it shouldn't be a surprise to us. It shouldn't be a surprise to us because the reality is people are people, people are flawed, and people are fighting every single day against the flesh. The ones that are giving into the flesh, we just got to pray for them. Scripture says to mark that person. Scripture says to mark them, but we still pray for them. It's a matter of trust, a matter of trust. You see, we, we think about all the things that we do. We base our entire lives sometimes on people. We base our entire life plan on people and progression through life based off of what's in our own minds, based off of what's in our own minds. But there again, God is not included. 
This is why we can't even trust ourselves most of the time. Our trust has to be placed on him. Our travels, our travels included him. Let me tell you what happened uh, coming back. You know, there's these little dings, and y'all know the cat's a flight attendant, so she's clued into these things. She knows when we're going to land or when the takeoff is happening or when maybe the, the, the captains, the pilots are calling out to the flight attendants. And I have this, it, it's, it's a habit, but it's a way of life for me. Before we take off, I will pray over each and every person on the plane and the plane itself. Everyone, the entire, the entire trip. But I do it every time before we take off and give thanks when we land. And so I found myself, I don't know what I was doing, but I was in my own head, I guess. And all of a sudden, the plane turned and I started to go back into my seat. And I look over and I say, babe, are we taking off right now? And she says, yeah, you, the dings. You didn't hear the dings? Like, no, I didn't hear the dings. So immediately I am saying, okay, I need to switch modes. I need to get into a place where I'm connecting with God and only speaking to him and not hearing anything else out there because I almost missed that opportunity because that's how much trust I have in the folks that are flying and the folks that made the plane and the folks that are maintaining the plane. It's not as high as the trust that I have in God. So I had to stop what I was doing to pray, but I almost missed that opportunity, but I choose never to miss that opportunity. It's not just for me because I still, I have that but if not type of faith. However it happens, it's going to happen. But I pray for other folks. I pray for other folks. And so even in our travels, we will pray. Even in our travels. You see, before you drive, before you invest, before you take a job, before you say I do, before you even walk out the door, y'all get the picture. Trust in him. Pray for yourselves. Pray for other people around. But it's a matter of trust. And you put that trust in him. You trust that he will answer and trust in the answer that he gives you. See, a lot of times people don't trust even in the answer that he gives you. I started that story about the man that was moved from one location to another. You have to trust the answer. Stay with it. Stick with it. Don't just... Decide, well, it's still not going my way. I'm going to move, but it's God's way. How can you move? How can you move? Why should you move? See, many costly mistakes have been made for lack of trust in God. Many costly mistakes have been made for a lack of trust in God. We forget to trust in him, and then all of a sudden, here comes that snowball, and it just runs right over you. And there again, we're wondering, what happened? How did it happen? How did this happen? Well, you didn't trust him with the little thing. And then it got larger and larger and larger. It grew into a big thing. See, when you, but you can, you can change that. You can reverse that. Go back to trusting him. Go back to exactly what that time was and where you are now and say, Lord, I know what I've done, but I'm placing it in your hands now and let go. Let go. Let him do his wonderful work for you. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see, there were some times, there was a time when it was praising God, but a time when there was some catastrophe. Are like sheep in many instances. We're timid folks. You know, I've seen some of the, some of the most biggest, burliest, strongest guys cringe when they see either a mouse or a, <laughs> it could be a spider. And all of a sudden, they're shrieking. I love this commercial that comes on and they throw the flag and the father is saying, you know, the son says, I, I saw what you did there, Dad. You screamed. And he said, no, I didn't. And they throw the flag, the red flag, like on a football field. And it goes to the replay. And you can hear the shriek come from the dad. And he just puts his head down. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. You see, folks can be timid. Scripture tells us that we have, we have power and we have dominion over the creepy, crawly things, yet we still run from it. I, I haven't figured out all of that, but that's the flesh that does these things for us and to us. We shiver in fear if our environment is just slightly off. That's what happened to sheep. 
if it's just slightly off just a bit, we run away in fear. Our water supply is not right. Pestilence is destroying crops everywhere. Where will we eat? What should we drink? We start to worry and get concerned about those things. And word has already told us that he supplies our every need. So why do we worry? Why do we get scared? Is it a matter of trust? I submit to you that it is. It's absolutely a matter of trust. New law is passed and we just lose our minds. You know, they can come in and say, here's a new law. And all of a sudden, everyone loses their minds. They get confused. They want to get upset. They start trying to, you know, just go around. We walk in streets. We do all kinds of things. I'm not saying that all those things are wrong. But what I'm saying is we have to put our trust in our Father. We have to trust him to go through these situations in order to see some correction because he has us in mind, our best interest in mind. How do you keep your peace if your heart is not trusting in the Lord? How are you able to keep your peace if your heart is not there? You ever hear that term, if your heart's not in it? If your heart is not in it, what do you expect to happen? We came through one of the most prolific events in our lifetime over the last uh, several, several years back, and we're still in the midst of it. Unlike anything that many people have ever seen, we have this pandemic. Do you realize that there are countries out there that are going through pandemics all the time? They're constantly in it, and then they had another one added to their burden. But they're still making it through. You ever, you ever just take a moment and just look at some of the countries out there, and you're going, man, how, how is this happening, God? How is this happening? God, he's taking care of each and every person, each and every need. Other places in the world, they just, they just seem to focus on God because they don't have all the, all the distractions that we have right now in our world here, in this country here. I see some of the folks that see our sermons online in Pakistan and in um, Malaysia. You know, they, 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 they reach out to us. And it's interesting to see what they're doing. But you know what? In the midst of what they have, they... It's not the comfort of this, like we have a nice room here, comfortable chairs. They don't have that. And yet they're still trusting in God that he's going to keep and sustain them. You see, that's what I do know about our God is he's a sustaining God. He is a sustaining God. He is constantly sustaining us even when we don't even realize it. Those that remain in perfect peace, they have that but if not type of faith. Whichever way God sees fit, it's going to be all right. See, sheep are timid. That's why he gave us this example. That's why he gave us the example of the shepherd and the sheep, because that's exactly how they behave. Again, if their water supply is just slightly off, you realize that if the water is not completely still, sheep will not drink. They will not drink from the water if it's unless it's completely still. Because they are timid animals, much like us. But we tend to think that, nah, I'm big, I'm burly, I can, I can handle things. I've got this. The reality is God's got this, and he has you. Matthew 8, 24, 25 says, And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. But he was asleep, meaning Christ. His disciples came to him in a world. the storm. We can't see God calming the storm. We can't see God moving the pieces of the puzzle of fulfillment for us. He's moving the pieces for us. He is setting the stage. He set the stage and he is already moving for us. You realize when we pray a prayer of a hedge of protection around someone, we're looking at the front, the sides, and the back. God's covering all of that. It's a matter of trust. We've got to put our trust in him. The only way to see things sometimes is not to see. We focus so often on what we see right in front of us, but we cannot see what God is doing even before us and what we cannot see. Even some of the things that he's cleaning up in our past. He's cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. Things the times when we forget to include him. 
You see, we got to stop seeing the way we usually see. Close your eyes sometimes. See with our faith that's been given us. Begin to see with your own faith. The only way to survive is to keep our trust. We look around, we say the world is on fire right now. It seems that gasoline is being continually just thrown on it. I think here recently we just witnessed where there was a balloon that was shot down and covered, crossed our, our, our airspace and crossed over several uh, uh, states. And then there was another one. And then I looked and I said, wait, another one happened? It's three in a week. And again, I'm watching people in a panic. They're trying to figure out why did it take so long and this and that and all these different things that, you know, look, I don't have the answer as to why. But I can say that one of the things was, well, someone could have thought of what about people that are on the ground. I believe that God has a plan for that. God has a plan for all this that is happening. We just don't know it, but we got to see it. Some of it is just fulfillment, prophecies that are just coming, and we're seeing them in real time. The reality is that, again, we need to get to the calming, cleansing waters, the cleansing, calming waters that is provided to us. Go to the well. Pray. Pray and put your trust in God. See, many are giving up before our author and our our author just finishes his work. Folks are just giving up. They're, t they're throwing in the towel. They're saying, that's enough. I've had enough of this. I, I can't deal with it anymore. I'm going to turn somewhere else. You realize that's exactly what was going on when the Israelites were moving? They couldn't even wait for Moses to come down. They're saying, you know what? Go ahead and just let me build us this, uh, this idol that we can worship. See, we don't even realize that we do those things ourselves, even in this in society today. It may not look like the idols that they were building, but we place our trust in other types of idols. We start to look at our world leaders and say, they can save us. No, they can't. No, they can't. Put your trust in God. It's a matter of trust. Again, when I said that we go out and some of the most, the largest things that we can think about or that we don't think about, we're trusting in that person that's riding right alongside you in the road, on the road. That big rig was riding. I got hit by a big rig once, just driving. And I was thinking, wow, I didn't think that they would have come over in that lane like that. They saw me, or they should have seen me. I was young when that happened, and it was kind of like, it was a wake-up call. That's why when, she, when, when Kat says that they're trusting my brakes, I'm thinking, yeah. Or they just don't have a care in the world. Either way, we've got to put our trust in God, knowing that these folks are on the road. But what about these bigger things that we're seeing? The reality is they may seem big, but everything around you is really not as big as you think because God has got it. He makes it very small and minute. See, the disciples were in fear for their very lives, and even seeing all the great miracles and the works of our Father, they didn't realize that they had the life preserver. The very life preserver that they needed was right there with them at all times. He, his work was not done. He wasn't ready to throw in the towel, yet they did not have the trust. They didn't have the trust. This is our great conversion that we have to overcome, the conversion of spirit over flesh. Stop looking at what's right in front of us. Start looking at saying spirit over flesh. Spirit will conquer the flesh. If you allow the Holy Spirit to connect with your spirit, it will conquer the flesh. We don't have him in the physical, but he's speaking to us so loudly right now. He's speaking to us so loudly, and I say that because we're going to go back to this story. That man that was forced to move his wife and his child to another land. And when I think about this, it breaks my heart. Because if I think about it as, did the man have the trust in the Lord to where he was going and what the Lord had in store? You see, when they returned back to that land that they came from, they looked around and they saw that things had changed. There was a difference in this place. There was a difference in the people. There was a difference in... <sighs> There was a difference. The man saw the house that they lived in. But right in back of the house, there was a field that was completely empty at one time. But now it was filled with homeless encampment there. There were tents all around. There were tents there where if you just reach on the other side of the fence, you could shake hands with 
someone who was homeless right there. And see, when that was happening also, our, there, there was the, the, the um, schools. There was a young child in a middle school that, that had brought a knife to school and stabbed another child. All these things were happening at that time. And yet when we return to this land, I'm saying we because this story is about me. This story is my testimony. This story is why we move and why it breaks my heart to see what has happened in our land and the place that we came from. This is why Elder was praying over it. When I tell you that I ask the Lord to break my heart for what breaks his, those are things that he places there. You see, but what I can tell you is the, store, the, the Lord restores things. The Lord is still in the business of restoring everything that we lost, we gained, and then some when we moved here. His plan that he had been sharing with me, pushing me to go and spread his word, finally came to realization when we hit this land. But when I go back and I see these things, it breaks my heart. I don't like to see anyone in hurt and pain, but what I saw was hurt and pain. What I saw was destruction. What I saw was continuous destruction. But he saved us. He saved us. I didn't know why we were being moved. I didn't realize that even at that time, not even staying where we are, not any part of that area, not any part of that state. He said, move, move. See, revelation comes later. Now here it is 15 years later, and I'm seeing what he saved us from. I'm seeing what he's brought us to. I'm seeing what he is moving in my life, and I'm seeing what he's moving in the lives of each and every one of you and people that you have not met here that are still being touched by this church. I'm seeing God's touch on many people. See, God has not failed us. God will never fail us. We just have to trust in his plan. He's restored. He is resilient, makes us resilient. He is strength. Many people couldn't even go through some of the things that we had gone through. This is my testimony. Many people just throw in the towel. They said, I can't do it. I can't get through it. They just stop. But the reality is we cannot stop. This is where that can't stop, won't stop attitude comes from. It comes from our Father. This is why we continue on and we press on and we continue to just pour into people, minister to people, pray over people. No matter if they're still, you still see them doing something that is not quite right, we still pray for them. I know that there were people praying for us when they saw us in our distress. In our lowest moments, there were people still there for us. And we're still here right now. But we came back stronger because God has come back stronger. My faith has grown stronger. This is why it doesn't matter what goes on around us. It doesn't matter if people come, don't come. We're still here. We're still going to keep pressing on because it's his plan. I now see much clearer now his plan. I can go back home where we came from and I can look at that. And I can honestly tell you, I had this conversation with Kat. I said, there is nothing. It would only take the Lord to speak for us to return. There may be something there. I don't know what that something is going to be. But I can tell you my heart was broken. I can tell you that the trust that we had at that time, I can't tell you that it was fully in the Lord at that time when we moved. I can tell you what I can tell you was, the fear set in. The fear was there. But it wasn't until later that I had to realize that God didn't, he, he, he doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So what am I scared about? What am I running from? So when people come up and say, oh, you go, you got it good. You, you're, people don't know everybody's story. You don't know where people have come from. They don't understand. But what I can tell you is the Lord understands. When people say, well, I can't do, and I say, yes, you can. That's why I, have, I, I rarely ever say I can't do. I know what I can do because I know what our God can do. And he continues to do. 
He does not forsake us. He does not let us be out there on our own, even though we think that we are. God is restored. God is strengthened. And God continues on. I left you with the scripture in the bulletin today, and I pray that you receive that scripture. And folks online, I'm sorry that you don't have this, this scripture, but take it to heart. It's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. Man will always... God that he is. He's invigorating. He's invigorating in everything that just pours out of me. This is why you see me do the things that I do. It's his strength. It's not me. He gives me that strength. He gives my wife the strength. He gives each and every one of you. When you guys say, here, hey, it's time to serve, and you guys jump up, and you're like, what, what can we do? That's God right there. And that's a matter of trust that we put in him. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for you first and foremost, Lord. I thank you for just comforting us, comforting us when we need it, comforting us when we don't even realize that we need you, Lord. I thank you. All of our burdens right at your feet, knowing that you will protect us, keep us, Lord, and strengthen us. Lord, I pray that this, this word reaches many people, Lord. They begin to turn more towards you and begin to see you for who you truly are, the sustaining God that you are, Lord. And I pray that comfort and peace upon each and every person that they realize that comes from you and their trust remains in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Lord.